Moore Town uh, Select Board. It's uh, June 21st, uh, 2021. We are meeting in the John Pogba meeting room. Um, call the uh, meeting to order. Um, first item of uh, business, though, is, is if we're meeting in the John Pogba meeting room, we need a plaque for the John Pogba oh, meeting. Oh, how about that? Wow. So nice. I'd like to present this to John. We'll put this up. And you folks um, you with our engineering and so you don't know, John's been on the select board over 30 years. Oh, wow. So uh, he's seen it all, heard it all, and done it. <laughs> and he's only 47 years old. <laughs> and he's looking at yeah. Can you hold it up? Oh, sure. <laughs> So yeah, we thought it would be nice uh, to uh, and after uh, uh, Irene, our new town office, um, we dedicated this room to John, and uh, now we'll have a nice plaque. So, thank you. Appreciate it. So, um, <laughs> moving ahead, moving ahead um, is there any public comments? Um, see, Johnny, you're here. You're probably here to listen to the um, uh, the sidewalk um, presentation. All right. Uh, any other? This is no one else here, so we'll go ahead and move forward. We have um, Callie and Ray, and as you, you can all see, Ray is not here. Ray will be here uh, probably within 20 minutes or so. But Callie has agreed to go ahead um, and start the discussion on road closures seasonal and talk about the um, ATV ordinance and guidance. So go ahead, Kelly. All right. So the first thing was closing. Seasonal closing for Lynch Hill connected to Herringburg Road. And in kind of thinking about it and talking to some people around, I don't know how much sense it actually makes to close that road seasonally. Because any way we would close it, either a sign or a gate, is probably going to get destroyed. And that's from past experience, is what you're coming up with that from. All right. Yeah, anything that's been up there. I mean, the road sign for Lynch Hill was maybe up. 24 or 48 hours and it got stolen. So I don't think people are just gonna tear it down. Right, no, I have, I have that same feeling. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense to spend the money to put stuff up there and have it not. But what may be more effective is seeing if we can get either the constable or state police to maybe patrol a little bit more up there or even a game warden during that month where it's really bad mm -hmm. and actually issue people tickets because that may be better. Someone goes up there and they get a ticket for tearing up land or making a mess, which is what they do, then that makes more sense and you don't necessarily want to be up there. So we may be able to contract um, with the state State Police Board, but I think the game board might be a good option as well. Um, so maybe that's something that Sasha we can um, think about. In fact, maybe we should have the uh, lieutenant come in and maybe we can ask him mm -hmm. that question as well. Because it's really from March to the middle or end of April that it's really bad. Okay, so there's uh, more patrols. What else? We got anything else? I think that's it. And it would probably be like a Friday or Saturday that would be the time when it would be most needed because people aren't really up there during the week mm -hmm. at all. And it's not the people who are going up to their camps that is the problem. It's the people who are trailering in, which I think is why this started because there were a couple people who trailered in in the spring. <laughs> so yeah. these are the are these, they bring, um, they bring their ATV on a trailer, park on They bring their Jeeps and their trucks in on a trailer. So these are unregistered vehicles. Yeah. And so that's maybe where the patrols can really enforce that. Because the honor towns that are on those roads, you need to at least have a registered uh, vehicle. Right, there's a place to be. So I think that would probably be a more effective way to handle it. Okay. Because then we're not worried about stuff getting taken down, spending money on it. Yeah, I and thought. it may be more effective. Good. All right, what else? So, ATVs. So, I had Sasha point out the ATV piece, and the main 
section of it starts on five, page five. And I didn't fill it in because some of this stuff was a question. Because we can issue civil penalties if we want to for people not following the rules. So we would, in essence, set that. It's also, we can limit the time the ATVs can be on the road. So we could say you can't be off road from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. and make that decision. Um, most of it is the same. The purpose is good. Section one, section two, all the definitions are there. Those are fine. And then, so the only thing that I was thinking for town highways being opened right now for the state of Vermont, if an ATV is going to be on a class three road, they have to cross on a 90 degree angle. And to get access to some of the class four roads where they can be on, people do have to be on a class three. So that is the question of opening class three roads open specifically for gaining access to a class four. So it wouldn't be like if someone could just drive down to the store. <laughs> they would have to be going somewhere. Because I think outside of us for Lynch Hill, we're the only ones that don't have to access a class three to get where we're going. Because that's our property line. And there are a lot of people who come up the road and do that. So so the recommendation there would be to um, some clear um, what roads would you have designated as ATV or, or have you guys come to that point yet? Not really. I would say, in essence, you could be on a class three as long as you're going to a class four. So figuring out what roads those are that would connect. Um, so that would be that if we wanted to put a time limit in, what would that time limit be? Um, single file racing. And if we want to allow people on public property or not. Because we can allow that or not allow that. I would suggest not allowing it to start with mm -hmm. and see where it goes. And then we can issue penalties. So if you're not operating single file, if you're racing down the road, if you're outside of the hours, and if you're on public property, what those fines would be. And I think that's kind of more, I think, of a whole board discussion on what we want those mm -hmm. to be going exactly. forward. And how, um, how do we enact this ordinance if we know? It would be, so it's basically the same setup that we would for any other ordinance. Okay. We would have to warn it, have a special meeting, yeah. and then post it. People can come in within 44 days and appeal it. And then we have another meeting on that and go from there. Right. So it would be the same as any other ordinance we would put in. Yeah. So is that something that you and Ray think that we want to go forward and try to figure this out, what roads to open, or uh, and what uh, fines, if, if, if uh, that's something we want to look at as well? Yeah, and I think it may be good to start with fines, because it's easier, it's easier to back off than add more. Sure. Mm -hmm. If you start heavy, it's easier to start taking some of that away or lowering them than it is to say, we have a problem, now we have to deal with it. And I know the one thing Ray and I had talked about was having, because VASA has some rules on who can operate, and this falls in with VASA, but a lot of that is anyone who's under 12 has to have somebody with them who can be in control of the machine, so they would have to have a passenger. The only tricky thing with that is most ATVs have a sign on the seat that 
you can't have the password. Right. And you have to be 60 to operate. So people do it, but. Right, let's go to the law enforcement to figure out. I mean, I'm fine with 12, but yeah, it's right there, state law. Yeah. All right, so um, it sounds like we have a little work to do on this. What we should do is have, um, how, how long do you think it would take for you and Ray to come up with uh, recommendations as far as what roads um, to uh, open up? I would like to say sooner rather than later, but. How about our um, first meeting in August? Would that work? Or the last one in July, perhaps? Is that better? Yeah, we'll push it. Let's do the first one in July. Yeah. Let's push it. We're going to push this. <laughs> All right, the only, uh, I'm not sure, quite frankly, if I'm going to be the first meeting in July, and I'd like to be here for this. And that's for the fines? Gonna, right. Or, or not so much for the fines, but just the discussion, the whole discussion on the, uh, what's going to go on with this. Um, so we all have a chance now to read this. Yeah, mm -hmm. take a little opportunity yeah. to, to get into this. Um, also, I'd like to see a little bit of, um, have you reached out to any other towns to see what they're doing with this? And I can. Yeah, that would be good to know what, what they've done and what they're, how has it been going? You know, has it been a couple of years and they're having lots of problems um, with it? Or has, um, you know, typically what I've seen and, and read about those, most of them are pretty well self policed by the groups themselves because they don't want to lose the privilege. Um, but okay. if you could do a little research on that to let us know. And I'll see if I can get a hold of some of the groups, some towns that have full class three road access. I mean, you can ride. Yeah, no, I know some uh, where I grew up, I read about up there and that kind of thing. Now they use them in cars up in this kingdom now. Yes. Um, and like Brookfield has a bunch of, you know, trails up. Right. I'm sure you can see the sign. There's a hole in there. Rock's there, that's Yeah, Rock's there. And they try to link them to the businesses. There's things that are going on there. So, um, and that's where you may look at public lands. We have a fair amount of public land. Uh, so if you can check with other towns again and see what their experience has been mm -hmm. with that, that would be good as well. Um, and we can tentatively go over We'll see what everyone's schedule and how you guys are doing. the last meeting in July. Yeah, we'll try to get it as quick as yeah. that might work. That'll um, be better because then we're not moving around the 4th of July. Right, that's mm -hmm. what my yeah. fear is. I think there's a good few of people that may participate even from the public because of that. So if we can, so I should plan mm -hmm. on that uh, agenda for this, uh, whatever date that is in July, our second meeting. It would be good. Anything else, uh, Kelly, with that? I don't believe so. Thank you very much, John. Do you have any questions? Don, anything no. we didn't cover? No. Not too good. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, All right, so let's go ahead. Um, next agenda item is um, the uh, 100 beat west side uh, sidewalk project. Uh, this is preliminary design plans. And um, I want to thank, looks like we have a fair amount of people here for this. I just want to, uh, before we introduce people even the presentation, just tell a little bit about the project, um, how it came about. Um, so we're all up to date on that. And it really it started in 2009. There was a study that the uh, Safe Routes to School Committee had done, and it was, it was done by Green Tree, Going Green. And in that study, they were looking for pedestrian ways to school, the safest um, ways and uh, traffic uh, calming at the same time. And with that study, they recommended that um, we go back and complete or update a study that was done in 1996 uh, that was looking at aligning, uh, looking at the sidewalks and where they would best go. Also in that 2009 study, uh, going green, um, 
did one of the other recommendations was the flashing lights that you see now that are up uh, for the traffic calming. Um, and the other, so the, and the other thing they wanted in that in their study is recommended that they uh, completed or updated that 90, 1996 study, and that's what uh, Du Bois and King did in 2010. Um, there was, I think, at least two different uh, meetings in town uh, looking for public feedback, uh, and also they had uh, cards or uh, other things that you could send in for their recommend uh, for their thoughts. And the purpose of the study was to see if there was an ability to calm the traffic and also have safe pedestrian uh, facilities. So uh, calming the traffic is not something that's new. We, we experience it now, but it's been certainly on the minds of people in town since certainly at least 1996, and I'm sure probably longer than that. Um, and what they, the study did is it, it broke up the, the village into three different sections. We have the village, which is considered where we are now, lower village, which is from the mountain road uh, north, and then the ledges, which would be from Hurdle Road um, south. Uh, and they did, the feasibility was to see if it was feasible to do it, and then cost associated with it. Um, and the other thing was uh, traffic calming. Those were the two purposes behind that study. Um, we have this study if anyone wants to take a look at it, but the recommendations uh, they came out, they came out with three uh, recommendations for sidewalks. Uh, the first being, uh, or, or one being the east side, the west side, and then the sidewalk from um, approximately the town garage towards Dickerson Road. Um, they, they didn't think it was feasible because of the ditch in the corner um, to put one in there and cost associated with it. So those were the two pedestrian um, uh, recommendations they had as far as pedestrian facilities. And then um, for traffic calming, they um, recommended the same thing, uh, sidewalks with a curb, I think it was a six inch curb or nine inch curb. Um, and that was, um, the other recommendation for, for traffic calming. And then once that was done, you would be able to put in sidewalk, not sidewalks, crosswalks. Uh, because it is a state highway, you need to conform to their, their laws and rules. And you need sidewalks on either side. You need uh, a certain number of cars per hour uh, and number of pedestrians. And I, that's all spelled out, uh, spelled out in here, and I think, um, those would be met, and the study indicated that if sidewalks were there, we could do uh, additional studies to prove that those were there, so we could put in sidewalks uh, in additional lighting to help slow down traffic. Um, and then uh, with these recommendations, we went ahead, uh, we did the sidewalks here on the east side, um, and then uh, two, two years ago, a year or so ago, we got another rec uh, another grant for a little over a half a million dollars, I think $515,000 uh, to do sidewalks on the west side. Um, these, these grants are um, non-transferable. I know, Don, you had had that question earlier. Um, and there's, I think you've been involved in some of the grant processes, you know how difficult it is to get, so they just don't allow you to, to change where you, you can do that. Um, so we have, uh, we went through the process of selecting a project um, engineer for the town um, and through a competitive, competitive bidding process, Du Bois and King um, uh, was awarded that contract and then the uh, engineer uh, was again through a competitive bidding process. There were three and each of those uh, we had Stantec. Uh, so uh, I will now stop talking and let Ken Roby from uh, Du Bois and King uh, take the floor. Sure, thank you. Um, so as I said, I'm Ken Roby with Du Bois and King. I guess my technical term for my role in this project is the municipal project manager. So generally my job is to assist the town in administering the grant, uh, going through the proper VTRANS uh, process of, of developing the project, 
and then trying and being a, uh, a point person for uh, the affected property owners that are there and coordinating with the town and the design firm, which then also will roll into coordination with the construction firm when we get to that point. Uh, so if you're, if everybody here is an adjoining property owner, you probably got a letter from me recently about uh, this meeting, and that was kind of the opening of making that contact. So please, anytime, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, but the, the lion's share of the work is done by Stantec and Eric Alien's Alien Allen. Oh, yeah. Allen. Two out of three. And yeah. Yeah. Well, so, but Eric Allen is the project manager leading the design for that piece, and he's going to give a presentation as far as where the project is. And, and our first question is, can everybody see that, or would it be helpful to dim the lights? It would be helpful to dim the lights. So um, my purpose tonight at the meeting is to review the conceptual plans, which have, oh. is to review the conceptual plans that have been developed to uh, this point, and to allow for some feedback and some questions and comments about the project. Um, on that note, I only have a few slides to get through, so if we could just save the questions till the end. I can come back to that PDF showing the plans, and we can look at any area that people want to see. Uh, so I will cover the project area, um, look at the project development process, and then go over those plans and we'll uh, have a discussion at that point, and then I'll talk about what comes after tonight. Uh, so the project area, I'm pretty sure everybody is familiar with it, and it's right out there. Uh, so we start at, it's a little small, but we start at the library on this end, and you can see the red cloud stopping at the bridge and then picking up and ending at the town hall. Uh, so it was kind of alluded to that there's some federal funding involved with this project and these projects all go through the same process. So it has been scoped, so we're picking up on the design end of things once a, uh, a preferred alternative has been selected. Uh, so we begin by developing the conceptual plans and documenting environmental uh, conditions. Uh, we then develop the preliminary plans and coordinate with utilities and just so everybody knows, for this project, we're sort of right in between conceptual and preliminary. So we're pretty early in the design process. Uh, once preliminary plans are accepted, we go into the right-of-way way phase, which is um, what was talked about when we start meeting with the property owners and discussing the impacts and any mitigations that need to happen. Uh, once right-of-way is clear, we finalize the plans and put it out for bid and construction. Uh, so that preferred alternative, as was discussed, was a five-foot-wide sidewalk with a granite curb. It's going to be immediately adjacent to the roadway to minima minimize impacts to the properties. Um, and that seven-inch high curb will be very similar to what's on the east side of the road now. And that will provide at least a little bit of separation between sidewalk and roadway users. Um, and the only major impact uh, to utilities was one or two um, service poles, uh, which we'll show in the plan. That we can jump right in. Okay, we can blow that up a little bit. So we'll start at the south end of the project. Uh, a few things to keep in mind as we go through this plan uh, the pink is the new sidewalk. Uh, gray here in the drives and green here behind the sidewalk is the temporary construction impacts. Um, basically just what will be impacted during construction. Um, we've got the stage right of way line shown in this red, as well as uh, individual property lines shown in blue. Um, one of our main goals was to save as many trees as possible. Um, and we kept it to a minimum what would need to be removed. It's just the ones that are simply too close to the sidewalk to survive construction. So those are sort of called out as we go through, either protected or removed, uh, depending on which it is. Um, and so beginning at the south end, uh, we our first kind of impact we see is uh, to the mailboxes. There's three or four of them along there. Um, they can't currently go behind the sidewalk because it's a, a driver motor route. Um, so we're gonna work with the post office and figure out some options for those and we'll talk to the property owners who are impacted um, by those mailboxes being relocated. 
Uh, heading further along, uh, you can see the entire sidewalk itself is within the stage right away, and the impacts onto properties are limited really just to making sure that the driveways are level enough to not catch a bumper as cars enter the driveway. Uh, but the sidewalk itself stays within right of way. And then there are a few areas where there might be some slight slope impacts, such as here. Um, that's, you know, just where they're going to have to excavate to get the slope to meet the back of the sidewalk and return it to grass when they're done. Uh, otherwise, the impacts are, are relatively minor um, and mostly within the state's right of way. Um, we do have a couple of landscaping features that are going to be impacted and will need to be relocated or removed. And then as we get to the bridge, as I mentioned, we're stopping. This is going to be a future project to reconstruct that bridge along with the sidewalk. And then at the post office, there's a little bit more landscaping in one of those utility poles that will need to be relocated. And then ultimately ending up at Town Hall. Um, so that's it from a design standpoint, it's pretty straightforward, but I'm sure there are some questions and I would um, love to take any of them right now or any other comments. And uh, please let me know if we want to go to a specific property to look at. John, any comments? I have several comments and I, I also have several questions, but I don't know if I did address them to you or to the board. Maybe they'll be apparent when I ask the questions. Um, you made a reference to some uh, studies that were done in 95 and two, 96 and 2010. Yep. Was there any recent studies done about the amount of use these sidewalks uh, have? How many pedestrians walk through town? Do you know if anything's been done about that, counting pedestrians? Not since uh, that study in 2010. In the, in the uh, also the uh, safe routes to school committee does have that information as well. So that would be one of my first questions: the amount of usage. But that can't, as far as you know, those studies have been done. That we were involved with the design only; we were not involved with the scoping phase of this. So that's one of my questions. I would hope that at a project of this size, we would spend the time to find out how necessary it is. Well, again, that's why several studies have indicated for traffic uh, calming in pedestrian facilities, those are needed. So it's not something that we've just decided we'd like to have some sidewalks. There was um, plenty so of- So there were satisfactory studies that- That's, indicated yes. Indicated we could go ahead with this. Recently. You, well, not recently. 10 years ago? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, it's the first conflation I've heard between Traffic coming in the sidewalk issue, the sidewalk being intended to calm traffic. Is that correct? Yes. And are we sure that's a satisfactory uh, system to calm traffic? It's effective, it does the job, or are there other ways we can calm traffic? There are certainly other ways that it can be done, uh, but this was the recommended way for this area because of uh, the size of the, the road without impacting the further property. I would appreciate your answers, Tom. I'm not trying to put you on the screen. No, 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 it's fine. I'm trying to give you what, what's you are, here. That's good. Um, I am concerned about the need for this sidewalk. If it's to calm traffic, that's a separate need. If it's to give pedestrians access, I would point out that in Waitsville, there's several areas of one sided pavement. I know they're just on the west side, right of the village. But as you go through, you'll see there's no pavement, for example, from uh, north of New Hurons on the east side, and there's something on the west side, and it's laid out so that there's always a place to walk, which there is here, so I would question that. And I would question the cost of it, even though we have a grant, am I correct in thinking that we have to contribute a certain amount towards it? Yeah, it, uh, the town's contribution is around 80,000. How much? 80,000. On this west side project? That's correct. And on the east side project, did we have to contribute as well? We did. We did. And was that cost kept within the, the bill or was there cost overruns? There was cost overruns and also we also included uh, with the sidewalks, we ended up including catch basins. Um, because of the catch basins were going to be located underneath the sidewalks, it didn't make sense uh, to do the sidewalks and then later go back and, and rip them up to put the catch basins in. 
And we needed to put the catch basins in because we also often have rain like we just had and uh, the school is filling up with, with water. And so part of the mitigation, part of the problem was uh, the catch basins weren't big enough and it was backing up. Uh, and that's why we would have problems in this parking lot in the school. So in order to get that done, we needed to do the catch basins. So it's been one thing um, to kind of mitigate the problems in the future. Once again, I am concerned about the amount of usages we'll get. It seems a very expensive project to serve just a very few number of people. Uh, and I don't know if there's been a study of how many kids walk to school. I'm sure, I unfortunately, know that's a pretty minor number in this problem. Um, you know, the traffic lined up, it, when it's time for school to get out, traffic backed up to my house. I do know that uh, when they wanted to put a cow underpass in a turnip on, it went on for a very long time. Finally, a cow underpass got put in. And I calculated that after 10 years, it was still going to cost $6 every time a cow walked through the underpass. That's the numbers of cows that go through per day, per year, not times 10 years. I'm pretty sure that's very accurate. I can see the same effect here. We have a pedestrian walkway. And every time a pedestrian walks in it for the next 10 years, it'll cost $5 for each person who walks in it. I want to be sure that we're doing this in a studied and measured fashion, something that's necessary, something that's needed, and something that the townsfolk can agree to. I would hope that there'd be an article on the next town meeting to discuss whether or not we should go ahead with a project that's going to impact every taxpayer in town. So that was some of my concerns. A major concern is about the loss of trees. Can you answer that? The trees that exist, there's about five large trees we have remaining. There used to be a lot more. You know that. Mm -hmm. I know that. Um, and I find that the trees are a very attractive part of our townscape. When you're driving through, when you're walking through, and I'm concerned. What do you know about the big tree outside of uh, Strauss's for example? The locust stays. The locust stays, yeah. It's right at the beginning of the project. Okay. It's right there. There. Yeah. Uh, at least I believe, trees. I believe the locust stays. Well, I believe them remove the different statements. Yeah, the tree nearest the road um, is currently called to be removed. Great, okay. Just wonder about that. Moving further down, by uh, Piazza's property. There's two trees there in front of his property. Yes, those would be impacted as well. Do you remove? Yes. I also can add that I understand, having seen the plans that he'll lose his planter, which is adjacent to the uh, fence at the edge of his deck when he steps out of the building. There's a stone planter that juts out about five feet. I believe that would be done as well. That's correct. Yeah, okay. Moving along, is the tree in your place? No, I have a big lot of Okay, then um, I'm not sure that the other ones that I'm in reference right now, but if you go in front of Sons property, which is by the town hall. Okay. Protect trees. Can I ask a question about what you mean? Great. <laughs> All right, well, again, thank you, everyone. Appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, thank you. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. There's nothing else really on the agenda, John. If that's true, you're just you're welcome to stay. Anyone? <laughs> Good to see you. Guys. Thank you guys. We yeah, appreciate the time. Nice we'll be in touch with you. Okay. Thank you much. You driving? Ken, where are you? Are you back in the kingdom? Do you live up there? Um, no. Milton. Milton Hawks? Yep. Almost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get on the interstate to be there. Yeah. All right. Ken and I actually went to high school together. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. He, he was in the smart club. Melton's still in the hall.
Yeah. No. Yeah, uh, there's one on the inner side. I thought he looked up in the north of Kingdom Slow or you know, one you know difficult roads to get there. Yeah. So Ray, before you look before you got here, Ray, uh, John, do you have a moment to show me your, your plaque? Um, we were able to get Ray, uh, John, a plaque for the meeting room that we put up. Well deserved. <laughs> We've done a lot for the town. I'm very proud of that version of our Um You know, one other thing I wanted to um, say, we got kind of going quick before, is I just wanted to. Take a moment, um, actually, just take a moment of silence for Eric, uh, who passed away. He was with the DRP for several years. He's did a lot for the town. So we just take a moment to uh, think about Eric. Folks, I uh, appreciate that. Uh, you know, it's one of those things we, uh, anyway, so appreciate uh, taking the time to do that. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on um, in just a second. I do, um, I think this was a good meeting that we had tonight. Uh, it was good participation. Uh, we have a lot of questions uh, to figure out. And then we can make a decision whether this is a project we want to go forward with. Uh, if it's something that's real controversial, we can certainly, or it'll be a petition, or we can just put it in front of the voters, which would probably be better anyways. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, so let's just make sure we decide we want to do it one way or another. If it's something we want to do, we'll make sure we have the right purpose and reasons behind it. And if not, we'll just scrap it. But um, either way, we can... Um, Go ahead and figure it out and let people vote on it in March if it is something we decide to go to move forward on. And it's been a long time since I looked at the town plan, but I'm pretty sure that sidewalks were part of the town plan, not just in the village. So this town plan is developed. Yeah, I, I think so. And that's some of the other stakeholders I want to make sure every, everyone's yeah. involved. Uh, and all the other communities, there was the safe route to school committees. Yeah. Um, and these, again, these were. These studies are 10 years old in this one. There may be other things out there that we may want to look at. So, um, but let's make sure we have all the information of why we want to do it in the very first place. I mean, it's just not because they look nice. Um, because there's a debate on that, too. Uh, so let's make sure it's the right thing to do. How would we look into like uh, a potential sidewalk for the folks in, uh, in Gallagher's Acres and, and uh, um, whatever the farm or uh, fair ground road. Fair ground road, sure. And, you know, how, how well, I think it? what the, I think the best thing there to do, and I was thinking about that earlier today too, is uh, let's meet with Cheryl Lynn, and there's certain requirements for all these per, for all these grants. Yeah. Like they'll ask, uh, like we needed a feasibility study to get these. So is that where we start? Do you need? And it's probably that's what it will be. Will be look for. Uh, a grant for a feasibility study, and and they're they're out there all the time. And we have a grant right now um, for study for this bridge over here. You know the bridge that by the, the, the sawmill. So uh, I think, and I think that's how it goes. But we can also talk with um, uh, just the grant people and, mm -hmm. and figure out. All right, this is what we would like to do as well. How do we get that process started? Um, who is it? Pam DeAndrea might be the person uh, to ask that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think she, was, she yeah. would be able to give us an idea of, all right, um, this is the process. So figure out, again, feasibility. Why would we need it? You know, obviously get all these people down into the village of water very safely. So I think there's a, certainly a reasons to do it, or purposes to do it. We just need to see if it would be feasible and cost effective to get money to do it. But, I think it's probably a good idea to look into um, as we're looking into this whole process that we're doing now with this this sidewalk. Any other questions on the sidewalk tonight? All right, so we'll um, take.
take our meeting notes and start working on those and see what other information we can get. We'll try to get together in August again with everyone to come back with information that we have uh, to try to move forward or not. I don't think I want to uh, uh, continue to spend money on doing anything with it until we, you know, let's figure out whether we're going to do it or not. And we will need to spend some money going forward with the engineering just to, to get where we need to be to see if it's feasible. But uh, I don't want to make this project lasts forever. You know, no. it, you make no. a decision or not, cut bait or, or do it. Well, yeah, that's the problem. We have the other sidewalk that's dragged out so long. Yeah, the budget we have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The longer right. it goes on, a yeah. hundred thousand dollar project today, five years from now is a hundred and fifty thousand. You know, yeah. just it was and they were already, I mean <coughs> we have the, the catch basins but you had the time length, and there were things that were just out of everyone's control. They, were, yeah. they had their studies that came back and said, all right, do uh, um, flood stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a sidewalk, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, crazy. that was ass. That was crazy. I mean, that cost us a year just to see if, uh, you know. But anyway, so. Yeah. So, I we'll wonder if we're having the same situation. We have, I don't know. You know, now you think about that, you know, we're doing the same thing. I mean, do we have to have another study? I, I wonder, but I would think that the engineers get right. I think at this point they would have detailed that for us. I don't know, but those are the questions, and they they took notes and they were taking notes, so they'll have to come back with some some answers as well. Um, and I, quite personally, I don't really care either way. I mean, I, I you know I don't walk on it, and so whatever we uh, think is best for the town overall. Be where I would land. But anyways, um, let's go ahead. We got reports and communications here. Sasha? Yeah. What do you got? Um, I brought up the MOU that's in the pile over there. The personnel policy, the only thing that had changed was the insurance for full time people, but I also added a page in there with the added new federal holiday that if you guys want to okay it with that. Um, David Russo and Greg McGurney, both of their terms for the DRB have expired. They would both like to continue for any motions for that. All right, well, why don't we first go ahead and go backwards, and I'll move um, for both Dave Russo and Greg McGurney uh, for their uh, reappointment to the DRB. Awesome. John seconds it. Is there any discussion on the uh, reappointment of those gentlemen? All right, seeing none, all in favor vote aye. 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 All right, so you let them know if they've reappointed and thank them. I also have um, the Dow's call today just following up on their site visit. Mm -hmm. Are you guys able to do one next, the, before the meeting? Um, when is our next meeting? July 6th, I think, because that Monday was right. actual observation. Um, observation. Personally, I need to check my schedule to see if I'm going to be around uh, for that meeting. Okay. Um, and do that, so I need to miss that that as well. Is that the Freeman Hill? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just wasn't sure. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Probably the second meeting there okay. in July. She um, she said that they're going to be gone in the last two weeks of July. All right, so is there right. maybe a possibility of maybe three of you going together or two of you at another time? Just yeah, time. maybe we can. Um, I, I'd rather go go as a group. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, we're looking at the same thing. So we're looking at the same thing. We have if there are any questions asked or concerns okay. that are there. Um, just hold that. Let me, you know, and I don't know what anyone else has holiday plans or schedules. Um, let me let us know. But if we'll figure something out, we'll get that as soon as possible. I'll let everyone else in on that as well. Okay. And again, I don't. It comes that I can't go. I can't go. That's no big deal. But the, the, especially the land things, it's it's usually good for everyone to be there because it 
coming back. Back is nothing we're right. not a one time deal. We'll be talking about that for a while. Um, what, what are the dates for the meetings in July? I don't know what your calendar is. It may be actually the sixth meeting better for me, so than the nineteenth. But we'll get it all together. We'll get a site visit and um, uh, Ray, you and Callie have a few things you're working on. You don't know yet, but Callie will. <laughs> I, I see there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but she, she it's did a it. Did no, it I think it, it's important. This is uh, personally for me. This is important. Mm -hmm. that, that I know in our area how important it is. For, there's a lot of users up there. Most of the good people that we feel now are up there to use it. Mm -hmm. So what you you guys are going to be looking at is looking at roads uh, to include uh, in the by ATV ordinance uh, to allow. Um, in that way, with, with something like that, it, it becomes easier for law enforcement to enforce yeah. um, the laws that they have and that there are things. And 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 I've also I've my experience in seeing what other towns have done. I've read about is that there's a lot of self-enforcement because the people that use it all the time really want to keep it. Mm -hmm. And so they do a good job of And a lot of them are connected to VASA, which is the same thing as VAST, but just for sportsmen, just for ATVs and side by sides. And so they have a lot of functioning trails, which is all the sign and markets, which we don't have. So um and the other thing that Sasha had was the MOU. Um, so the change there that we have is we just, uh, I think, from 10,000 to 12,000, we increased the um, short term maintenance expenditure uh, with the, with the uh, hardwood medium. And the other thing, Ray, and I know, I think, did you send the. I'll, I'll have to send it to my, I guess I'm not to send it to my okay. Okay. Last week, so I will when I get home tonight, okay. I will send it to you. And what I'm talking about that's the estimate for the side, uh, the, the, rest, uh, of the, the rest of the parking lot, mm -hmm. yeah, right. um, that we were looking to get 50% from, right? The, um, Basically, it takes out the, the drainage work that they're doing, right? From the original estimate, um, all right. So, the other uh, action item that we had it was just. Was the insurance? I just want to make sure I get that. Oh, it's in here. I'm sorry. So, Sasha, do you want to go over that change so everyone is clear why and what it is? How much did it go up, or is it what was the change? I can't remember. It was different from last year. I know the premium has gone up. And John might know that. Yeah, well, the um, I know the premium's gone up, but uh, also I think we should specify the three thirty nine eighty one, for example. That's every two weeks, right? Yes, bi weekly. Okay, so is that, that doesn't that you? that's not down here. Okay. Okay, and then the other thing is. I think it would be better, I mean, the town pays 339, 339.81 for each employee, regardless of whether they have dependents. So I think it's better to say say that. that per em, no, 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 I, I would say town pays 339.81 per employee, okay, for, for, the, for the employee, or for the employee, rather than of a single plan, and then pays 189.65 additional for any dependents, if they have dependents. Now, that would be for a two-person plan. We don't have any family plans, so I don't know whether we should have something in there for that, or just, if we get a family, change it. I feel like we should have it in there. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, Who knows? That's, that's how I think. Yeah, so that we're not scrambling. You yeah, know, we're correct. not being. So we should probably, before we enact this, look at what a uh, family plan. What the family would do. Right. And also, I'd like just to, because um, I don't know how off the top of my head, just so we on the record, what the difference was from the previous year. Um, now that's because we switched plans, right? We're not on the one that was a couple years ago. They changed it because we got a different rate. Because we switched them. Probably last two year. years ago, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Last yeah. year was the yeah. first year. Yeah. 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 Um, so the other uh, uh, town uh, personnel policy change that I think something that needs to be addressed. Um, just recently, uh, Juneteenth was, yes. was made a national holiday. Um, I expect that the uh, state will, will go forth and put it in their schedule. So I think that we should add it. So um, as of going forward, uh, it will be a recognized holiday in the town. Mm -hmm. um, and you that will be in, but when we get the um, Premium settled. We'll, we'll go ahead and finalize uh, that. But unless anyone has any questions about that or reasons or not, right? You all good with that? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Kelly, John, Don, you all good with that? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, is that going to be like on a, a Monday, or is it going to be the same day? No, oh, June nineteenth every year. Every night. Just when you do the yeah, so, the week. Yeah, yeah, yeah so it's pr probably going to be just like the fourth. Right. So, It'll end up the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It'll be a yeah. flow. Yeah. And, and yeah. the reason it's June 19th because um, that was the, and I hope my history is right, that was the day the Union troops, um, two years after the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, let slaves know in Galveston, Texas, that they were free. So that's the significance of that date. Um, what was that? It wasn't either. We were never taught that. No, it's incredible. I was never taught that in school. Yeah. Well, yeah, there was a. All the way through school. Yeah. Well, it was even more incredible. There was a. Um, what's it? The big. The town that. They burned down in uh, oh, Tulsa. Tulsa. Yeah. Did you ever hear about no. Tulsa? No. Never knew nothing no. about that. It's crazy. No. There's a really, really, I don't know, I'm off sidetrack here, but um, on the History Channel, go look that up, and it's on, on the Tulsa. And it was on like Sunday, like three weeks ago. And it is really, really good. Um, it was actually on two different networks. I think it was on ABC. Was it? I, I saw it on the History yeah, Network. I'm yeah. pretty sure it was the History Network. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's on, on Tulsa. Tulsa. Yeah, no, yeah. it, it yeah. totally is. Yeah, we, we and it, uh, yeah I have it on uh, whatever that thing is that we do. Yeah, yeah. 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 we take it anymore. <laughs> it's not taped, but whatever. Recorded. Uh, yeah. Recorded. Uh, DVD. Yeah. It's in the cloud or something. Some of the cloud. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that would be something I would, uh, if you have you know, an afternoon to, to watch, I mean, it's, it's really, it's informative and it's, Pretty sad, actually, but yeah. Um, anyways, we'll have to move ahead. Um, in addition, we have uh, last time we were together, uh, we had asked to get a le uh, letter of agreement uh, between the town and Jeff Ledoux. Uh, so we have that here uh, to sign, and that's uh, an agreement to have six yards of material delivered to Legal Trail Six annually until the town is able to. Have the legal trail survey defined, thus designating the location of the trail. So that's good. I, to, you know, I did, uh, actually, I went over the wording with Jeff as well. Is he? Said Jeff was good with it. Good. All right. So we'll, we'll sign up on that tonight <laughs> as well. Um, Sasha, was that all that I had? I think so. Uh, Sherilyn did print off budget things, uh, budget statuses so that you guys can go ahead and mm -hmm. figure out uh, where we're. Hemorrhaging in here or not. Um, so, okay, thank you. So, let's go ahead, Ray. What do you, do you have any reports or communications? I think that was it. Just the, uh, 
Just that. I'm sorry, I just hold it under. I didn't know if you wanted Jeff to sign it first and then bring it back to the board and have us sign it. Or if I No, I think we can go ahead and sign as long as you don't change it on the way there. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> Little addendum to the bottom is like, wait a second. <laughs> plus or, or uh, a plus 12 one. yards and, yeah. <laughs> and paving. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, let's go right around the table. John, what you got for us? Okay. Uh, Don and I had a good meeting with Joyce Manchester this morning. And uh, so she's going to look into a couple of items for us. Um, the big biggest one would be hopefully to add a couple more of the flashing signs. Like, All right. You know, one, one up by Maynard's and then uh, one on the other side of the bridge at the other end of town. Uh, if they can add two, great. Uh, if they won't, then maybe move these. I mean, that, those were put in and began with this safe routes to school and, yeah. and so on. So, uh, maybe, you know, so that's, that's a, a start anyway. And then we discuss different, other different items, and, uh, including crosswalks. Um, that's good to know about the, the curves. Yeah, yeah I, wish I read that. I didn't know that until <laughs> today. Know. Yeah. Oh. Good, what? That you can't, need, can't do a crosswalk without doing that. Curves, curves on either side. And you have to right. go somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So that was that. And then, um, kind of interesting, my uh, son Jeff, who's the general contractor on actually the Hunt's house. Um, he's been noticing a lot of things in, in town. One of the things he noticed was we don't have a sign on the fire station. It identifies what it is. <laughs> really? It doesn't I say really there's one over there. there. Well, does it say one town fire station? No. no. <laughs> if it does, it's pretty, pretty small. Because I, I went by it and I looked and I said, no, no you're right, there isn't one. Right. <clears throat> so maybe you know, you know even, even like we have a Patan garage and something. I think it would be yeah. pretty good. I want to say they had one. I can ask that. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, 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 I pretty sure I, I think yeah, there used yeah. to be one. I know. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I really thought should. I really thought that we did. I thought we saved one off the old one. Yeah, yeah. It, that's 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 what I thought. Huh. Anyway. Might be upstairs. Yeah, if you don't mind, check with Stefan and see yeah. what he he has to say on that. And he has. <clears throat> Excuse me. He has been noticing speed limits in town, and he says for the most part, people do stick to the speed limit. It's just that thirty miles an hour is fast. Yeah, you know. I think but that's, I mean, that's more the, the issue. You can yeah. move it to twenty or something in, in and the village, it, and then you might get thirty. I don't know. Yeah, and when a truck a truck goes through, you know, I mean, it, it seems even faster. You know, at thirty. You know, so. It, it, bumps, it's just a you tough can't one. Do those. You can't do those. You can't do those. We, we can't lower it to 25 unless uh, we take over the that section of highway. So, what about uh, putting islands in the middle at, to kind of slow this thing down a little bit? No, because I think that's what they did in Danville. You yeah, know, Dan, 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 yeah, but they I'm have sure Danville takes. Yeah, they have plenty of room, but. Pretty sure Danville took over that second highway. Which, <clears throat> that's why I was just going through there. It, it hasn't held up very well. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. All the, where the catch basins are, it's all dropping. Really? And it's only a couple of years old. Yeah. Or yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, 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 it's about five, five six. Yeah, it's really. But they, they spent a lot of money on coming. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right. Village, they, they did, yeah. Yeah, yeah as you know. come in on the, uh, the west side, there is, like you said, John, something that slows you down that you have to go through there's a middle curve or something yeah like right right um, but i don't think there's enough room because that's what they talked about in that study wherever it is i need to give it back but um you need certain without impacting more people's property you couldn't do something like that um, yeah uh, the other thing is maybe we just look at more law enforcement um, i'm gonna you know, bring that up too. Yeah, I think it's time to and look at that again. So, Sasha, so if possible, what we'll do again, we'll start through our schedules, but let's get the lieutenant from the state police to come in. Um, in the past, they've uh, offered, I mean, they do, and in fact, Waterbury, they're contracted, they have two 
uh, Hops or Pinsman uh, contract in Waterbury now from, from the state police doing time there. Um, in, in the past, we had the Sheriff's Department and I lost confidence in them uh, at the uh, Irene. Yeah. I mean, we had contracts with them. We asked them for extra help. Um, they weren't helping. We pushed a little bit and they sent someone in and they, to be quite frankly, a real prick. Mm -hmm. And remember he gave your daughter a ticket yes. or something in the window. He gave low or he gave one of our residents a ticket. Uh, she had a brand new car and didn't have an inspection. And this is the second day of the flood and it's chaos because we pushed, we wanted some law enforcement. They decided this is the sheriff. The they were going to be yeah. jerks. To us. Yeah, oh yeah. You have 15 days to get an inspection if you if you buy it out. And it's oh, no, no, no. Hey, right. She bought it out. Of, she bought it in New York. So it wasn't a problem getting those taken care of. It was being a jerk when we needed some help. Yeah. Uh, and then we subsequently asked them for reports. We were getting billed. So I want to see where they were and what they were doing. And after six months, they, they couldn't give them. And it's, it's bold because my brother was actually a, a county sheriff uh, in New Orleans County. And he says any town that wanted to report, he just hits a button and spits out, here's where we were, these are the hours, and this is what we did. Um, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't work. This had very little faith in right. the sheriff's department around here. And I don't know if it's changed, so long story, let's get the, the state cops and maybe we can figure out get them into town where we can actually ask them to be. Again, the sheriff would not even allow us to say, we would like you to sit here or there. And he's like, no, we won't. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, when you're paying the bill, you should be able to uh, at least have a little in insight into what they're doing. What about, uh, you know, the, the trailable speed limit, you know, with the flash and light things? I wonder, you know, if we could look into those and and maybe buy those, you know, you park them on the side of the road, and, you know, if you're going right. more than the designated speed, you know, the light flashes, you know, it makes people realize you are coming through a village, you know, maybe something like that. I mean, I don't, I don't know the cost, you know, I don't think they're cheap, but it might be I something. think we looked into those at one time, they are, and I think the recommendation was to check with the state police that um, they have some of those and are willing to put them out at places and it's just kind of being squeaky wheel and say, keep saying we need it we need it and finally getting it um you mean the ones that are on that trailer yeah 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 that you they've said that we can we can uh, do that um those are temporary but as a matter of fact i do remember them saying that it was at a different location and we would have it after that location and nothing would have happened I, I just think at the time. I think that was something right around, I think that was right around the pandemic time. I, I mean, we have speed <clears throat> zones, Jonesburg, we have them all over the place. So if we had these lights that we could just bring around, yeah, them, right. you know, spend a couple of days here or there, just make people more aware that we are. A, yeah. Looking yeah. into that? Yeah. Yeah. Traffic they, control. They, they do say lend them out, from what I understand. Uh, but it might be if we had one. I, I am. Uh, uh, you know, I drive a lot on the road, and I really try to uh, be cognizant of the speed limit because I need my license to work. <laughs> and uh, but sometimes you do find yourself going into the, these situations, and it's these. If you know, you're just not made aware, and that's not. I need to pay better attention. Uh, but it really does help those yeah. flashing. I think that's a good idea to have one on either end. Yeah, I know I saw Joyce last Thursday and I mentioned the same thing to her if we mm -hmm. can get some up near the maintenance area. Right. So I think if we do that, we get some law enforcement in here to perhaps, whether it's a temporary basis or whatever we figure out to, to, to try to, to help. Um, and if you're son of people, when are, when are the big trucks coming through? You know, is it Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, or is it every any? Just any times. Yeah, I, mean, you see, you know, I, I, I see it too. See it uh, by, yeah. Right. But, uh, and, and that's the other thing to talk to our legislators that you know, 
that they've got to do a better job maintaining 100 days. This is not a primary rule like 100. And I know that I believe we had Adam look into that. And he said pretty much it is what it is. Yeah, we have trucks going to Rutland, you know, down here. They're not even going to the valley. I mean, come on. They should they should maintain these roads better than we do. So the rumor is, you know, they closed the district here, District 7, I think. They are going to now reopen that district. They're going to have their own office in Middlesex. Because right now we're dealing with Colchester. Colchester. So we're going to reopen this district office down here. Down in Middlesex. I believe so. Middlesex. Yes. And so I think that will give us a better control of all our our state people. Mm -hmm. well, be good. Yeah. yeah if, if there's a local foreman that you can call and yes. talk to down there exactly. that knows the road, I've talked, called the Colchester, and uh, nice enough people down there, but they don't know what you're talking about or, or what you know. You can't say can you get something yeah. coming through this more town, more town. Or, more I think we and we're right on the edge between the two districts, so it's there, like, yeah. we're like yeah. the Lost child. Yeah. No one wants us. <laughs> um, well, a, two, a couple of things. Is one that I mentioned to John this morning is that uh, maybe we could help initiate a sort of a valley-wide effort with other towns, and that is to maybe like approach at least some of the, all the local businesses. You know, like um, Cas no, Casella, Kingsbury. Mm -hmm. York, you know, the, the company you work, all these different companies, I'm sure the owners or the, the, the head of these companies don't want to know, have their, with their trucks on, names on their trucks being seen driving through speeding, going too fast through not only our town, all these other towns, but even on the, on Route 100B, out right. on the flats, you know, and I just wonder if there's some way to, to stop that initiative, to reach out to companies to like, Hey, can you like you have safety programs? Can you work out, reach out to your employees and say, hey, you got to make you know we we want you to get to the job, we want you to get to the job safely, but we don't need you to speed to get to the job, mm -hmm. you know, and because I think I see that a lot with you know companies, the guys, you know, they're, yeah. they're, they're people speed, you know, and maybe that's a one outreach that could be something that we could. I don't know how to initiate that, but it might be something to think about. The other thing is, when you were just talking about the district there, is that about two or three weeks ago, I reached out to uh, the woman who was the project manager here, Jennifer Zorn or Zorn or something. Yeah, Jennifer Zorn. Yeah. And left her a message because there's some sections of, of 100B here and the curves that are already is already starting to crumble. There's, you know, past our Moortown sign coming south. There's already some pavement breaking up. Oh, where right? is it? Yeah, and then just after you go by Stephanie Benham's, and that first corner, if they don't do something soon, that's going to start to crumble because one car went off there, a truck went right. off. Right, yep, yep. But even before the truck went off there, there's already been erosion to the to the bank work they did. Not the bank, but the road bank. Yep. And if they don't do something about it soon, that whole corner, you know all what it was like before they repaid it, it was terrible. So, um, and he told me, the gentleman I spoke to, at first said, oh yeah, well you should call Colchester, but then he said, oh yeah, well, you, you know, the middle, you know, talk to the, because it's not a warranty item, because it had federal money, so Pike's not, doesn't have a warranty. It's not even, I don't mean, it's not even a year, yeah. right? I've always been told. That? I mean, I know we've gone back to jobs within a year. I know state jobs. We've always we've always done that. I don't have this fight that. Just well, we're right. off You're really right. right. Yeah. And if they don't do something about it, it's gonna just you know it's gonna just crumble, and we're gonna be back. It'll be years before it ever gets fixed again, and we're gonna have the old so broken who, up road. All right. So who did you you were trying to contact Jennifer? No, I left her a message asking who I could call because, you know, I said, well, could you reach out to, to Pike or something? 
who's responsible. I just want to let you know that the road, because I knew she was the PM. Yeah. And who, who, uh, could you pass it along that, because I was noticing it being sure. cyclist. No, I think that's good. Yeah. I, I, but I'm just trying to figure out, right, is there anyone else that you? Well, uh, well let's together, yeah, the, the, the district that we dealt with, uh, we deal with them all the time. We dealt with them on the, oh, the sidewalk and the um, whole thing, or not the sidewalk, taking yeah, out what was there. Uh, is it wrong? You know, we, you know, yeah, I know what you're being, yeah. The guy I was talking to was <laughs> Matt. I never, I didn't yeah. ever catch his last. But we have a contact in these units. Yeah. Because, but it's, they still don't do anything with the drainage on the other side of the road, which I maintain was a pipe problem, where we had to puddle down by the uh, town hall. The first house passed that. Andre. No. Not Andre. So, why don't we? Um, yeah. Sasha, you can look into it with Sherilyn or Ray or go back in notes. But then, Ray, why don't you handle I, this? I will. I will. Uh, yeah. And I'll give you a call or send something. Even, you know, if we're going to get into that, I mean, there were new um, railings they put in, one right across from me, that they smacked with a snowplow. And it was a snowplow. And it's just, no one's touching it, you know? Okay. And again, it's too bad. I mean, it's brand new stuff, and it just... It kind of, you know, you see where you went into it, you know, because it started again. And so, yeah, it shouldn't really, like you said, Don, you made a good point. It'll be years before any of this yeah, stuff is touched it's again. Yeah, right. Um, I can't believe there's not a warranty, though. That's why, that's why I was sort of reaching out because, like, I didn't want to, you know, I saw it right and I was just going, oh, this is crazy. No one is, knows about this. And, you know. Well, I, you know, unfortunately, with that whole project, and it's a nice looking project, and I appreciate it kind of what they're doing it. They're doing the same thing out in front of Dubois on Route 2. <clears throat> it's not the best construction they're doing. It's not. They're not tearing up or, or grinding mm -hmm. what's there. So I anticipate this road and the road that they're doing right now, the Route 2, within a couple of years, especially the Route 2, because that was, the drive paths were really bad there. Mm -hmm. And they're not doing any reconstruction of it putting a thin layer of asphalt on it that you're seeing is already deteriorating. Right. And I mean, it's spending at this point, you know, it's good money, it's just not well spent. And I agree. I agree so if you can get this guy's attention and if yeah. not do something so we can, I mean, I think it's probably, you know, probably not gonna go anywhere, but at least we should let people know. From there. All right, John. Okay. Well, that's, that's all I have. Mm -hmm. Don, what do you have? I think the other one. Uh, um, okay, well, uh, I did reach out to, uh, I think his name was Ryan from Green Mountain Power. We, we had that email, but then I also followed up and called him um, about the Chapman School. And they're very willing to work with the town. I mean, he even suggested that maybe that there could be some uh, way of working with the town on <laughs> Green Mountain Power's taxes, make some deal. I mean, he didn't buy the thing that we sold it for 300 and we'll give him four. <laughs> yeah. He didn't like that idea. But, um, so that they, got, they are willing to work with the town, but they do realize they have a, a pretty unique piece of property there between the barn and the old schoolhouse. And in between the barn and the old schoolhouse, apparently there's this beautiful brook that runs through there, this rock ledge, and it goes down to the river, and it's all that. And I mean, they, they have sort of identified where a septic could go in, and where they could do a well. And, um, so, I mean, it, it seems like a, it would be a, a great project, but I just don't know if, you know, if we as a town, that could be something that we really would take on, because it's certainly going to be costly to, to, to go in there and, you know, put a septic in, put a right. well in, you know, what? renovate the building, renovate the barn. We're not going to go into, right. like, we're not going into real estate, you know, it, I mean, you know. And if it was sold, it's going to become a, a tax property. There you go. Right. Income right. Income down rather than exactly, exactly. And someone could go in there and do some, as I talked with this guy, some very clever stuff. I mean, the barn, it's right, it could be, it's right near the uh, kayak exit. Someone could be, it could be a sports yeah. 
company yeah. renting canoes and kayaks. And anyways, I mean, I said I'd call them back and I'd come to the board and just give you a report that they would like, they'd be happy to work with the town, but as Ray said, I mean, it, it just might be more than, than we could, we should, could or really would take, should take off, could or would, could or should, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think if, if it can be developed, and when I saw his email there and said so they were looking for septic and there's things like that, um, my concern would be, is I just didn't want the property to go to just sit there and rot, you know, yeah, fall yeah. in itself and then be an eyesore and, you know, it's doing nothing. But it sounds like there may be opportunity for them to, to sell it and someone develop it. Yeah, um, I think so. the only, and this would be a crazy thing to want to go into real estate, but um, that money that is, uh, that we get the recovery funds, one of the things they talk about is affordable housing. So the other thought I had is, all right, so we get that on the cheap uh, from Green Mountain Power. We have a certain amount. We um, develop, you know, put a separate, build, you know, again, we have a couple hundred thousand dollars there. Um, make the affordable housing. You sell that, take your money, do it again. So it's a possible way for the town to accomplish a few goals. Um, more people in town, affordable housing. Um, you know, and my, you know, so we, you know, it wouldn't be in our interest to make huge profits on these, on something like that. And it may be something where we don't even, you know, as someone said, we're not into real estate here. But, um, it, you know, just, who knows? You know, that, is that an opportunity uh, to accomplish some of the, the goals that we're, we're trying to do here? Um, because, and I'll report out, I'll report out right now quickly on the recovery funds that we have. Um, so it's a little different than what uh, Chuck's folks came to us with. Currently, uh, Moortown is estimated to receive 174000 Three hundred five eleven cents in total funds, um, and they're to be distributed in two equal payments, fifty percent each time, uh, twelve months apart. Um, the first fifty percent was um, you needed to actually request that, uh, and the date has since passed. We requested that money because otherwise, if you didn't, it went to the state, and you might be able to get some, you may not. This way, you're getting your money. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it's coming, uh, it's going in its own separate fund, so it will be represented so we can see what it is. Um, the other part with this, and this may be where um, Chuck was, why we were so lucky, he was looking at $600,000, they thought we were gonna get. Uh, how those, if you've read about it, and I'll have someone send the link out so everyone can read It'll be much easier if we all are familiar with it and how it works. I think maybe I mentioned that last time. Uh, rather than me try to explain to everyone, oh, we can't do that. Yes, you can do that. If everyone takes a moment and goes through. Um, so the other thing is, is how it was gone, went through Congress. It was allocated funds that would, were to go to the state, um, the towns, and the counties. So that's, you know, a lot of states have county governments. Um, the bigger states or the southern states, I don't know, uh, but a lot of towns have county governments, so those funds would go to the county. Because the state of Vermont does not have county governments, there's still a question how that money gets dispersed. Mm -hmm. uh, so our congressional delegation uh, is working with other uh, congressional delegations from other states that have the same issue. So it is on everyone's radar, and they're trying to figure out how that county money gets distributed. So that 175,000, 74,000 should go up. Um, I don't know how much or when, but that is being looked at. But at the minimum, we have 174,000 at this point. Um, affordable housing is one of those things that they talk about extensively that can be used for. Um, there's a lot of, uh, or a fair amount of uh, strings on how, on 
you know, as you can imagine, with that type of money uh, that you have to uh, go through to make sure that it's being spent properly and there's um, a fraud. But I think we can probably do a lot of different things with it, but we'll, we won't make those decisions quickly. We'll take some time to find out where it would best uh, work for the, the town. Well, there's, there's Green Mountain Power, they're trying to move ahead with this pretty, yeah. Pretty quickly. Well, pretty fine. Quickly. Again, uh, so. I think go back with them and then say there is an interest here, just get particulars, all right, but would you actually do? And if it is um, tax uh, relief they're looking for, you know, that might be something. Well, he just do that on sure. a possible Yeah, he may idea. not know. He may go to his people and they're like, you're crazy. You know, um, so he doesn't know. But they're, I think we're open to everything. Let's. Yeah, he was just excited about, oh, great. And, you know, he just wants to see something done with it. The barn is three stories, post and beam. You know, there could be a couple of apartments in it. I said, you know, that's how, the, you know, yeah. one of the thoughts he had. I don't know about the schoolhouse, and maybe you could just make that into a single dwelling. But right. I don't know. I mean, you certainly so could tear I, those things down and build another housing project. I don't know. Just, yeah. I don't know. So, I mean, I think we should, we should let them know there is some interest. We've talked about affordable housing there. Um, but let's find out what their details are and yeah. we can okay. kind of cut bait or not there. Um, okay, then uh, I did look in, I did talk to the town administrator in uh, Waitsfield. Um, they have a system called the Meeting Owl. As, as far as if you want to allow people to still join meetings remotely. Um, and what it is is a camera, it's a microphone, and a speaker, and so it, it uh, follows the, you know, the mm -hmm. board around, and then also up to 10 feet in the room, you know, so you know, maybe if you're on the table, we usually have our table over there, yep. in any event. And then you would have uh, two computers, basically, I mean, you'd have uh, one laptop where people would like let's say Sasha would have her laptop that people would zoom into and then we would maybe just have one on the table so we could see who was talking, you know. But we would really be we would be on this um whatever meeting on. Yeah. And so the system they got this with recovery funds and it was a thousand dollars and um that's what I found out. I mean we can decide I mean it, Someone certainly know COVID has changed how we all operate now and how we all meet and whether that's something we want to still, you know, get out on the road that people can come to be involved in at meetings and, and uh, they're doing it and they've been quite successful. We should, um, when do they have their meetings, do you know? Um, I don't know. I think well, we, we, could call, we could check it out. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I think either someone go or someone just, you know, hop on right. and see what you think. And I think it would be uh, to get from the consumer angle from it and say, all right, does this work or not? Right. Or is it, you know, I can't hear, I can't see, it doesn't make sense. Um, oh, I could call her, I could call the, the town administrator back and yeah, say, find you, know, out when. Some, you know, when is the meeting and can we just, you know, either sit in and see how it works or... Or or well, it's all public, so in. we can just yeah. you know we can right. go sit in and do whatever. Well, you'll we want. be if, if you were sitting in, you'd just be on. The, you'd be doing just like you were on Zoom, right? But it wouldn't be like how we were the other day, you know, like oh, sure. right. Laptop, that was crap. Yeah. yeah, no. It's, yeah, this thing kind of moves around with it. Yeah. Well. So, anyways, I'm just reporting back on that. Yeah, no, I think that's good. What is everyone's thoughts on? I, I really like, I think when we start doing that, we start taking away from the community and, and people coming to our meetings and seeing what real people here making real decisions. We start doing it on the computer. It becomes very impersonal, you know, and I, I, I don't know, I just, I would rather see people come in here and just like it was before COVID, we want to talk to the select board, you know, come to a meeting and sit down and talk to us rather than just go on a computer. Right. I, I think it allows people who, um, 
really not a lot to do, I guess. And just, a, you can tune it in and listen and see if there's anything of interest, which is kind of nice. I mean, it's nice to have that. Um, but like I said, it would be nice to get those people to come to the meeting and participate. Um, well, she did say that people are still, still coming to their meetings, but it has a name, well, like you're saying, you know, some people just want to tune in or just right. hear when they get a copy of the agenda or whatever and they just tune into a certain part of it. Yeah. Um, anyway. Well, let's, when you get some information when their next meeting is and how we could kind of uh, observe it yeah. somehow. I know, I think Warren has, has done the same system as well. So, um, let, let me ask um, our TV person here. Have you experienced any of that uh, new audio visual as people have gotten back to live meetings, people still doing a hybrid or what you, what's your? Yeah, some people are doing hybrid meetings, but um, uh, I think they're wanting to meet in person now. Yeah. We pretty abruptly stopped doing uh, Zoom meetings once the legislature. Uh, yeah, once they ended. opened everything up. It's, well, that we had to. I mean, there, you, you had to provide a live meeting. You know, there was no choice. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the law at this point. But yeah, I, I think it's something to continue looking into and see if it's something we want to pursue. Sasha, do you mind knocking the light on here or is this down? Yeah, they turned it down. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember it being this dark. We're getting laid or we're. Thanks. Not yeah. Yeah. Wake up, everybody. <laughs> All right, Don, go ahead. Um, so I've been, you know, working with the Efficiency Vermont. Um, so we did the town hall. We're going to try to do a walkthrough when the town arrived on Thursday. And, um, and then um, I guess Stefan can be at that one because Martin's grading all this week or something. And then we can coordinate with Stefan when they can do a walkthrough at the fire station. Um, I don't think we really need to do one here. We, we want an energy. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> <laughs> they but, come in and um, we start picking out stuff. But like. they, they did, I think I, I think I forwarded, I'm pretty sure I forwarded on the, the uh, email that the, got the, the recommendations that they made for the town hall in terms of some lighting, and, you know. Um, I don't but, that. Um, well, I mean, it's all, it'll all be sort of, it, it, there's a whole, so many other things that we're looking at there. Yeah. That we took this information and went okay, you know. Um, um, but I, if I have, I'll go back and check. I thought I did, but I'll send it, you know, I'll send it along. So that's that's an update on that. Um, and the only other thing I had, which I brought up at the last meeting, and maybe we could just put it as an old business item, is that, you know, maybe um, how we can work on. Uh, um, engaging more people, you know, in our town government, you know, I mean, I know Ray is saying, you know, it's great when people come to our meetings, but also how we might down the road get other people to be even on the select board, you know, I, I don't know if, if uh, the LCT has any way that they do any, have any programs on that or how they, you can do any outreach into your communities and, you know, just how we can get some, you know, I think, I think, changing of the guard. Or I think diversity. one of the most, uh, the easiest way probably to, to really do something, Don, is, is go out in the community and, and talk to someone. And say, look, it, you know, I'm on the select board. I don't want to be on here, but I would like someone to take my place. So maybe this in the next, by our next meeting, you could come back and say, <laughs> I've, I've found my replacement. Uh, I found some diversity I was looking for, whether it's, I'm not sure what you're looking for, and bring them to the meeting. Um, you can resign, oh, and, no, then, no, and, then, and then we'll, we'll, re we'll <laughs> put them in. I'm not <laughs> suggesting that. I'm just trying to think about how we can just do some outreach for just looking into the future. I mean, well, I think we that's how you do it, is, is, you, know? you, is you, you find someone that you, with some interest. And bring, you well, know. But I'm thinking that as a board, how do we do that? I mean, you know, we're just, you know, I don't know. I, I just think, think it would be one thing, I think it would be one thing if 
we never had anybody running, you know, and we had open slots. We, we haven't had that in, in several years where there wasn't any, well, you, your, your slot, but I mean, that's because you can get petitions. Well, one thing is I wasn't sure know. if I was going to run. And right, I well, that's the only, okay, so but, that's you know. the only thing, but I mean, what we really need is people to do the other positions. Yeah. You know, auditors and, and yeah. so on. I mean, that's, that's, you know, that that's where we really need. And, and, you know, and that's how you get your start. I mean, I started in the planning commission. So, and, uh, you know, and I was asked to, to run for select board. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, one step at a time, I would, I would say. But, you know, you I definitely need the other positions even, to be filled. Even then, there are organizations like Emerge does that to push women to get into politics. And they have a bunch of training programs, not and not just like, state government, but local government, and some of those smaller positions, too. So... Emerge? Yeah. And they're... They work great for stuff like that. They have classes, so people... And it's not getting in, but it's, you know, how to run, what are things looking like, how to... So how do they, how, how do they promote themselves? I, think I know they're on Facebook. Is this a, a state agency or yeah? State it's connected agency? to a national, a bigger national organization. Yeah. But they do and stuff like smaller positions, like getting into being an auditor, getting into the planning commission. Mm -hmm. kind of Maybe that's something. That. It was Madeline Cunin started it in, in Vermont. She was she got that out of the way about ten years ago or something. Yeah, Molly yeah. Gray was actually in one of the classes. The lieutenant governor, All she right. was in one of the classes. I mean, they're classes, but... Well, maybe you could reach out. So, Don, that's an answer to your question right there. I mean, I'm sorry you want me to resign. But no, I didn't. <laughs> no, you're the one that's asked me to resign a couple no. times, I think. Um, you're, I, I just don't know what else to do. I mean, I you don't know... I I'm just know, throwing it out there as an idea, you know. What I... The, the problem is we're so damn good. Nobody, that's right. nobody <laughs> feels they need to come in and replace us. That's what the bottom line is. If people were not satisfied with the select board, they would come and get on the uh, ballot and try to get elected. Or and they don't know what it entails either. Like well, they don't maybe, know. maybe not, but I mean. It every, used to be that way. I and mean, we did have competition many yeah, years ago. Right, and right. believe me, there have been some boards that, uh, you know, there have been people sitting here and, you know, and, and uh, you know, we're rude and things like that. And um, you know they they micromanaged us. And, yeah. You know, wanted to look to see everything that we were doing. You know we don't have that anymore because people are satisfied. Um, so you know that and that's, you know as I as I always say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know so. I mean you know change is good, but you know there are, are better places I think to focus change. And that would be that would be starting with some of the others. I mean, look at the ballot; it was blank. All these things were blank. Yeah. Well, that, everybody's right. Yeah, that's, that's where right. we need people. Yeah. And a lot of people aren't even aware of all these different things. So. Yeah. That, or the time that it takes, thing. or aside from the select board, actually, you can get compensated for it fairly well for the things that you do here in town, mm -hmm. as an auditor, <laughs> as a lister, all those. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we should look at that too. So actually, that you know triggered something in my mind. Um, in Burlington, at the the Burlington City Council, so they have this very same thing you were talking about, Don. Is how do we get more people involved in here? Uh, and one of the things that they've decided to do when they're putting on a ballot is is they're going to pay a lot more um, because. I mean, as we sit around this table, and I mean, I know that if I'm fortunate, I'm in a position that I'm, I'm on the road a lot, I make my hours, I kind of do my thing. Um, I can do this. It takes a tremendous amount of time, as you all know. I spend, you know, how often do I, we talk in the morning? You know, three or four times yeah. a day, where there's something, there's just always little things yeah, that no one even around yeah. even really notice. But you don't mind, I can do it. I'm on the road. I have the time. Mm -hmm. If 
someone's work, and I, and you all look around, how many days in a year do you take off for your town duties? Again, you're retired, so I'm not asking you when you're retired. You're, I guess you, you and I. <laughs> 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 I guess you and I are only working steps here. I've only here. got another 32 years. Come yeah. on. Uh, thank God I'm not that long. But anyways, um, I mean, it's at least, I've got to say, three, four, sometimes even more. I'm liberal with it because I've got a lot of time. I've worked with a company and it, for a long time, so I've got built up time. So if you're working... You know, a regular job, you get two weeks or five days or something. You can't afford to take your vacation time to spend it to do a, a trail, to look at a trail, to meet with this person or that person. So how can you change that? And is it, all right, now this position pays um, $10,000, $5,000. Now does it make it so that... That person that's, you know, the, the working, that it can ma make sense for that more other person. So, I mean, it's all different. And I'm not suggesting that we get paid 10000 here, folks. No, right. <laughs> um, but I'm just saying, those are the things that other communities are grappling with, trying to get more participation. I mean, um, it, same problem here, maybe a little different uh, decimal or whatever, or yeah. different things like that. So it's not unique to Moortown as far as uh, not having a lot of people come out for our, our boards or our committees. I think we're very lucky that we get the quality of people that we actually get. Um, Absolutely. Because, I mean, we all know here, the five of us run a million dollar business here. Believe it or not. A million dollar business or even more. Um, and so it's a lot of responsibility. So. You want to make sure that the people are sitting around here want to make sure it's they're vested in the best interest uh, and not with a lot of different um, agenda items on their own because it can you, you know you've seen that John on your boards where they get right. nothing done and you know then your town's people that's when you start making people uh, wonder what you guys are doing so um, you know, I was being smart or not, really. You know, you need to actually go out and find someone to take your place, really. Oh, okay. Well, I wasn't thinking of that. I just, and, and I say that wholly, right, yeah. you know, um, and for other communities. I, I would ask Callie if you could look into this and Lar what was it? What was the emerge. emerge, emerge. If you can look into that a little bit and mm -hmm. find out what type of outreach that they do in the communities. Maybe that's something we can have and we can do some type of... I think they do a lot of work with the LCC. Yeah. A yeah. lot of work with the LCC in directing people. All right, so maybe that's how we can that figure that, you know, you get into that. Yeah, we'll yeah. get Karen and start with that. Yeah. So, so I think that might be a start to get some ideas of what other blood we could get in yeah. there, or, or such, nice. or, or not even here, but just community. Well, let's call it. Let's let's put it on the uh, um, old, on the um, what do we call it? Damn, uh, old business pending uh, community engagement. Why don't we call it that if that's fair with everyone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I'm not saying like for tomorrow. Just something get it. two years, a year from now. Right. Just so we can, you know. So that when, when people are ready to move on or, or not, at least there's some kind of, um, you know, triple A to get people ready, you know, at least so that Transition. you can, right, so you can be confident that, um, that, you know, not that I think we all, that we do the best. I'm sure there's other people that can do a lot better, but I mean, I want to be able to get out of the seat. And, I mean, I, if someone came to me tomorrow and said, you know, I have the passion for it. I have the experience I have, fine. I would love to have someone like that, but I haven't had anyone ever come up to me like that <laughs> and express that type of interest or want. Um, right. You know, I mean, that's the, that's the problem. All right, I have one last item. Uh -huh. uh, Ray, did you get a chance, you were gonna maybe talk to Martin about the, I sent you that soil report and the 
Yeah. Thing yeah. from Mike Brown and all that. I noticed they cut all around the trees and stuff. I did talk to him, and uh, yeah, he said, you know, whatever you want to do, he's willing to get his so work maybe I, get, I can get the tree warden down there, and we can look at it, look yeah. at the soil report, and see yeah. what we can okay. feed they the would trees. Just, they just need somebody to, out there directing them okay. on how to do everything. They'll do okay. it. They just, you know, they're not right. landscapers. But yeah. They're very capable of doing whatever needs to be done. Well, we got the wood chips right there, but <coughs> you know, or mix the first. soil, whatever. Yeah. If you need to, whatever they can mix the soil. They just need to know how to mix it. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So just plan a time if you make sure you're just coordinating with Martin. So yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you know, the priorities and. Well, yeah, I know. They're, they're busy, busy crew. There. Yeah, I mean, it, I would say, you know, give them, give them a week. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I gotta get back to my and stuff. And John okay, yeah. Okay. 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 All right. So we'll move on Thank to you. Yeah, you got it. Can I go first? I got my turn. Now then. <laughs> I did try to recruit someone, though, a couple weeks ago. How did you know that? Did you know that good or what? Oh, well, they seemed into it, but... We don't know. We'll see. Well, that's good. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, you never know. You never know. You never know. But, no? Yeah. Okay. So the other question I had is when we had, Don, maybe you can help us here, um, the presentation last week, one of the things that they asked us to, to look at or revisit was an agreement with did she ever reach out to you? She did. She did um, about a week later, um, which was last week, mid last week, and then I, I was crazy to get back to her. Um, but a question came up to me is, I guess we had addressed this as a board sometime in March. They had asked that, so I'm wondering what was the impetus of that. And do they realize, or do you understand that it's a town library as it is? It, I mean, it's a town library. So I just don't understand why there's a need for an MOU. Uh, we have an MOU with our school because that's not a town entity and it's something we need an agreement, but it's a library, it's a town library, and as a board, we support that library. I, I, I don't know, and I'll get back with Jeff, but I just don't understand what, do you know what they were looking for? Or no, what? I, I don't actually. I think they just want to have, from what I, and I haven't been, been yeah. a trustees meeting or anything. I've only talked to Corey, you know, sometimes in the meetings with, with Corey as the librarian. Right. That I think they just feel like, you know, going forward as we see what we're going to do with the town hall and if they're going to be one of the major partners, that they have some agreement to be there. You know, that we, they don't go, we don't go all down this road of getting it organized and having a building that's going to be a community center with the library in there, that they have some kind of understanding, you know, that there's some kind of understanding about, about their... Well, being, I think as... They're not just like a tenant. I think that's... You know. Well, I think as we move forward with figuring out what we're going to do with the town hall, that's when we'll be able to figure out if we need agreements or want agreements. And, right. and then, you know... But at this point, I mean, they're welcome to stay there and use it as a library. I mean, I don't think there's anyone in here that has any. No, uh, no, 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 no. I, you know, I think we just want to, you see know, where see go. where we can go with it. Right. Uh, well, but I they mean, shouldn't feel, and, and I'll talk to Jennifer about it, that it's, and if there's things that they feel they want to do differently or they need, they just need to come to us. And as a town, you know, do we hey. support that in the library or, or not? But so, uh, I just don't. And they may have reasons that were not told to us prior or last time why they feel they need some type of uh, MOU. And if they come up with something that, and I'll bring back whatever she says, I'll let you all know what it was. But um, but that will be the question I'm asking is just really why, um, because we consider you, or them that we consider you are, we voted on it three or four years ago uh, to confirm that it, it is a town library. You know, it used to, there was questions there, and then right. Michelle did all that work and found any reason we just reconfirmed with the vote that it's a town library. So, um, yeah, I just. Well, our next town hall meeting is, is Wednesday. All right. 
right. Well, I'll talk to Jennifer for yeah, tomorrow. I'll be on we, the phone. We won't, we won't be. We're not. We're, this is just a town hall meeting. You know, it's not. Oh, she right. doesn't really. Jennifer, as a trustee, she hasn't come to those, to those meetings. Okay. Well, good. I hope uh, you guys are moving forward with that. Well, we so. haven't had a meeting since the meeting we had. You know, this right. is the first oh. one since. Oh, good. Well, I think yeah. that'll be. Uh, will be good to do that. Where do you where do you have those though? At the town hall. Alrighty, um, so that's all so I... Start keeping up with all the emails sometimes. <laughs> no. You know, I mean, it's very oh, easy for you to miss an email. I know, I know. I have two things. You've got two phones. Can you add how many emails come on that? I get it. It's, you delete, delete, delete. That's the biggest thing you got to know how to do right there is which ones to save and not. All right, so let's... Um, Move forward. We're, we're getting late here tonight. Uh, old business uh, minutes. I will pr prove that we accept the minutes of six, seven, twenty-one. Thank you. Um, any changes or comments on those minutes? None. All right. All in favor, vote aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. All right. Um, now we're into old business. Is there anything? Pending that anyone wants to discuss. I think we've gone over a lot of our own business things already this evening. Josh, do we have anything else that needs to be? How about Robert Turner? That hasn't been talked about in a while. Yeah, so the last I I thought he was working with Martin four or five months ago. Am I right? I haven't heard anything. Yeah. I just figured things were coming into place. Yeah. So I sent him an email probably a month and a half ago to see where he was at. He says he's waiting on Do you think he's waiting for the road crew? Yeah. Yes, uh, remember I we went through remember we came up with the codes, right? Yeah. We went through the code thing and I thought So you think the ball is I think the ball is down there, but they probably think it's on Robert. So okay. it's just miscommunication. Do you want to address that with yeah, him right and see that? Yeah. Anything else on the um, the survey? Yeah, the uh, I was just gonna bring that. There was a server report. Basically, this this was kind of odd, but when I looked at it with Mark uh, last year, he he had showed me uh, it was the it would be the easterly pen that he thought was missing. But when they met with the landowner, it was more of the westerly pen that he thought was missing. And that's the pen that they found with the magnetic locator. And so Martin and the landowner were not in agreement of which pen was missing. And I, believe, <laughs> it, it, I know it sounds weird, but the, the pen never was taken out. So the bottom line is the landowner thought the pin would have been taken out, but the pin never did get taken out. It's there. It's always been there. And the other pin that, that, that Martin thought was there, that he took out, never was there, but they put a, a grade stick in where the probable location is, and that the landowner was going to have a, his own survey done anyways. So I have not heard anything more than they were out there last Wednesday I think just finish up this thing. I haven't seen a bill. I'm sure it's going to be less than what they quoted because it, it wasn't nearly as much work as what they thought. But it was just kind of odd, you know. I thought, it, again, I thought they were looking at one thing, and I went up and looked at it with Martin, and it turned out to be someplace else. Hmm. And I haven't, I hadn't talked to Martin since then. But, um, but they have talked to the landowner, you know. I forget his name. Dean. Dean. Uh, and Dean, at one time, was not that happy, but I think he's okay now. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was following the emails. I just want to make sure that... that yeah, no, I'm glad you brought that up. Because I had, yeah. But there is a survey report. Maybe it's in my email that I will pass on. In, I haven't really read it. It shows everything they did and how they got to where they were. 
you know if we get the lawnmower back? I think I'd ask you. I don't know. I, when I talked to Martin, I thought he was getting it. It, it was in for repair. And I, yeah, I'm just curious if we got it. Yes. Yeah. All right. So probably not. Okay. Just um, make sure we're we'll be getting that back. Um, is there any other old business that we've? What's that now? Uh, nothing. Uh, just side conversation with us. Uh, how about some new business? Anything going no, on? Not, yeah, I'm not sure if this is new business, but when we're talking about the Grandma's Bridge, um, I kind of be interested to look into you know, what the extra expense would be to take a look at a covered bridge. It used to be a covered bridge. You know, it's kind of neat. The one right by the fire station? Yeah. Um, the one... No. No, you're, oh, no this, this is the one that goes... Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. No, 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 no. the town hall that goes across. Grandma's bridge oh, across. Okay. Yeah, the one sorry. that goes yeah. down by the wharf. Yes. Yes. Right yes. right it used to be a covered bridge there? Yeah. Well, we do see in old pictures. Um, Sherilyn shared with me that we have received a grant for the, the study of that. So uh -huh. that's something we can ask them to okay. look into. Yep. I thought you were going to say, ask about buying the property on the other side of the road and <laughs> <laughs> throwing up the, 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 the bridge. You know, I mean, just. That's kind of why the park. Yeah, kind of <laughs> interactively. <laughs> Love a little oh way to get there. The same thing happened to me. I got confused one day thinking they were talking about this bridge. Not that <laughs> <laughs> Grandma's how bridge. That's how we call that. Grand that's because that was the, the little. Yeah, because that's what Grandma's was. And so, and so this bridge, other bridge here is Freeman's Brook Bridge or something? What, what, what's this bridge here? Yeah, Doctor Brook. Doctor Brook. Yeah, Doctor Brook. Doctor Brook. Oh, Doctor's Brook. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, is there anything else, folks? I think we've hit everything that we need to tonight. We have a few things to sign. Um, we have this agreement here. We have a few um, curb cuts. Looks like Carl Wimble's getting a curb up there. Martin's okayed it, so that's good. And then if we can just go over um, these few bills here. They've not gotten a lot. Yep, done. So many yarn down there. <laughs> now that you said it. What? Did you just yawn? <laughs> yeah. Are we, are we supposed to sign this or move? Yeah, you go ahead, Ray. You can sign off on it. This goes to work, too. Well, for your information, I did not look efficient here. Again. You didn't? No. We fished hard. We didn't catch many fish. Did you have a good time? Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah. Who were you with? Uh, my younger son Brad and my daughter and another guy. Nice. Yeah, it was just nice. <coughs> Sorry, so here's the personal policy we're not signing yet because we have a little change there. I have the uh, um, MOU, which I've signed. I think that's the one first meet that. And they're getting to the warrants. Here's that, also that feasibility setting is last one. So are we supposed to sign this, this or is this just tucked in? No, 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 it's just tucked in there. You're just looking at the hours. Yes, that's right.
John, you need to make sure you get on this too. Thank you, everyone, for a good meeting. I think it was a good meeting today. Thank you. It was nice to have people. Yeah, it was a little bit. Even though it was a very robust discussion, I think that was good. Yeah, I think it's good. No, it was good. That yeah. was good. Yeah. That's the nicest feeling to see. Right, right. right. That's where you, what you want. I mean, yeah, you'd yeah. rather not, you know, have people yeah. come at the end and then bitch about it. Just like, exactly. let's talk about it. Exactly. <laughs> and they were, everyone was very respectful. Come sooner. Ask your questions yeah, nice sooner. Just, oh. The last time I was here at the meeting was March 8th, 2020. March Just before right. the, he, before he, he was here for the organization. Mm -hmm. the organization. Mm -hmm. That was it. Yeah. 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 All right. So, um, motion to well, I'm just ready to get signed. Uh, Tomorrow we start the downward. Oh, I know, huh? That's right. It's getting, it's, it's, days are getting shorter. The days are getting shorter. Don't say that. I know. <laughs> Tom just signs all those, doesn't he? But Ray, we're going to let Ray do the check oh, it out. Okay. Okay. It's good every once in a while for every someone else to well, check the hours. Right. Just make sure you check the hours. hours. Yeah, I, I have been doing a lot of mine too. Yeah. <clears throat> Start seeing a bunch of old things. Well, I went from being salary managing my own hours, not putting anything in, to now all of our stuff is electronic. Oh, so you're going to. Everything you do is. Everything we do is in there, but instead of with every phone call, we auto-generate and we would have to handwrite notes. Now I go in, so if I have two phone calls, I just walk out a chunk, half an hour, talk to this person, general of the private service, put my time in, my notes all done, I'm done. Efficiency, that's what, uh, kind of what we're trying to get our road crew with this Robert Turner stuff. They can put more th notes in like that and do those type of things in their hours. And then everything is, we're not, Fooling around and stuff like this, more so actually, so we know where all the materials go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Easier for them, but anyways, we'll get them on that. So, what am, uh, am I taking this to Jeff or how are we doing? Yeah, once you do that, right? If that would be um, the easiest for all. I'm taking this to Jeff. Okay. So you know where it is. Right. And then once we we'll lie. Uh, get it back and then we'll record it after we inspect it to make sure there are any changes. Um, there you go. So I would move to uh, close the meeting. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Vote aye. 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 aye.